Yeah, yeah, you know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders Podcast. Mega Rand, Jesse, and Dodger. What up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream, and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow and see what the Geek Enders are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream, and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast, without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week. Got a job and a kid, I know that you all beat. So, take a second, grab a drink and vibe. While we catch you up in just a matter of time. On gaming, comics, whatever you're doing. If you're nerdy like us, then you know you should tune in. Thank you for sharing our world with us. Now follow, subscribe, and turn this up. Yo, it's Come the on. weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast, without a doubt. Hello, everybody. Welcome, Hi. welcome to Geek Enders with Octopin. Yippee! I have to stop saying I'm so yippy pilled lately. I gotta stop doing that. What what Sorry, caused what? it? Why did you start yippie saying pilled. yippee? Um, I have a friend who says it a lot, and it just sort of like we like Friends are the gateway. <laughs> it's true. Like yeah. that's why I started saying hello for a while. I was like, hello. Because like my friends would say it. Hello, yeah. Mr. Obama. <laughs> but like, um, I'm very like yippy pilled, so it's like yippee. It, like I'm f- very. I feel hmm. like it matches your picture a little bit. Oh I can ima- yeah, I can imagine yippy with this? coming out of that. You mouth. can imagine Neko Arc doing that. Mm. But I need- what's that? What's happening here? Welcome to the show, Octo. It's yeah, so nice thanks. to have you. Thanks. Uh, what is what is happening with you? Where is you? Where is you? um. I'm here. I'm here with you right now, sharing sharing my time and my love with both of you. This is like one of those things where you just wanted to be naked, but because of terms of service, you're you like, don't you know, have put to the call cat me out, Jesse. You don't have to call me out like this. So we can me all assume out. right now. You can assume whatever you want. I'm not going to confirm or deny anything. I got nothing to be ashamed of. I I am in my own. I live alone. I am in my own ho- my own house, my own place of residence. I can wear whatever I want, whatever suit that I choose, birthday or otherwise. <laughs> I managed to slip a pun past Octo, I think, which is crazy. It was a what bad pun. Say? It was not a good pun. <laughs> it was really good. What? what did you say? I didn't hear it. I don't even remember anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go back and watch the VOD. No, no, I remember. <laughs> okay, Jesse, reenact it. Um, this is Octo. Well, you didn't have to call. Wait, hold on. Well, you, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, okay. you didn't have to call me out. And the daughter said, me out. Thanks for coming to Geek Enders, guys. <laughs> it's been a real pleasure being here with you. Thank you so much. It's you're wonderful. You're wonderful hosts and you're a wonderful audience. Let's thank see you, you guys around. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Octo, come back! Octo, come back. I'm here. I'm here. I, that was. It was all part of the bit. Oh, Hi. good. Oh, that nice. was a good impression of me, Jesse. You're very close. <laughs> no, you know what? It wasn't close at all. I got. I can't do impressions. It's the one. I have I a can... few impressions. I have a few. Impressions. You can do great accents, though. I, mean, I know you can. I'm very good um, accents. Uh, Australian. Uh-huh. Crikey! Let's oh. put another shrimp on the Barbie. Yep, that's wow. Very good. I mean, wow, it sounds very like straight good. out of it's like out of it's Adelaide. like I'm in Bluey. I know. It's yeah, like I'm yeah, really yeah. it's like I'm really seeing Bluey. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The the one the one good. thing I the one thing I learned from Bluey. Well, I've learned a few things from Bluey, but um, one thing I've learned is I didn't know what the hell a bin chicken was. Yeah. What yeah. is a what is a bin chicken? A bin chicken, and I hope I get this right. I believe it's a breed of ibis, um, and they like, are, they're like rats. They're like, like they raccoons. Just, <laughs> yeah, they just like go into the trash and eat out of the trash. Oh, so it's like a slang term for a raccoon. It's a bin chicken. No, it's a bird. It's, no, it's an it's an ibis. It's a bird. But it yeah. It's oh, but it's right. like so an Australian version of a me. raccoon. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Okay. they behave right. like raccoons, but no, they're birds. chicken. Yeah, no, yeah. I get it. Yeah, yeah, America's yeah. got raccoons, England's got foxes, and Australia's got really has bin chicken. Ibis. Yeah. Yeah, but we call chicken. them trash pandas because that's what we are. True. Yeah. True. So trash true. pandas. 
I don't yeah, know if chickens. I don't know mm-hmm. if foxes have a fun kooky name like that. To, to foxes? yeah yeah. Uh, Sneaky Mountains. There it is. Sure, there it is. That's the one. Point that one. You start saying it. I mean, stealth mountains. I, stealth mountains. So, like, I mean, if you think about it, all slang terms started somewhere. You could be patient zero. So true. I don't want to be patient zero for anything. You know, like, <laughs> really? just in general. Don't mm-hmm. want to be associated with patient zero for any. Even if it's, like, patient what? zero, the funniest dance craze. Like, I don't want that. What would, I do. I think that'd be great. What would be a better word? Because I feel like it's the word patient, right? Yeah. You don't mm-hmm. want to be sure, patient sure, sure. zero. That implies you can something say, has some happened to you and you are in, now going yeah. through it. So what Innovator. In, innovator uh, zero? Yeah. How in, do you feel about in, that? <laughs> innovator, um, patient zero, potato, potato. It's all the same. I would, yeah, I'd rather be like um, the, creator, the creator or Ooh. the one. The architect. Or the ha- progenitor. But you have mm-hmm. to put zero right? at the end. Progenitor Zero sounds awesome. <laughs> that sounds that like sounds, an Iron Man villain. Like, that sounds so cool. Yeah, that does I sound want that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. the origin. That's, Ooh, that's the origin. Cool. I like that. That's good. That's a good one. I a good am one. the origin. See, that's mm-hmm. better than Patient Zero. Patient yes. Zero, the implication is like, yeah, I kind of, I kind of, it happened and then y'all and got then it. Never, and then y'all caught it from me. Sorry. That's yeah, on me. Sorry. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Octo, so, what have yes. you been up to? What's um, what's you, you know, you know, what have uh, what have you been? I don't. I'm still don't have an answer as to as to why you're naked on this podcast and I, hiding I, behind I, a cat. I just I didn't want to be on camera. I just feel like like literally anytime anyone asks for a picture of me, I send them this. Like if you check, you, never mind. I can't talk about that. But like <laughs> there's there's uh. Anytime somebody's like, send me, it's either that one or the picture of Winnie the Pooh wearing the Tims with the beanie on. Um, That's I don't know why, one. but I I don't know. Neko Arc's just funny. It's just a funny thing. I like mm-hmm. it. Um, Stand up for yourself, but, Octo. You're like, it's a cool, what? funny picture, Jesse. And I yeah. can be naked if I want. <laughs> if I want to. Yeah. Um, my friend sent me a tweet that said, like, instead of self-deprecating yourself, if you start to self-deprecate yourself, or you say something just afterwards, just say, wait, I'm goaded. And then you, and then it's, it's completely <laughs> counteracts it. So if you're like, oh man, I know it's kind of a dumb joke. Wait, I'm goaded. <laughs> and that's it. Like that's, there you go. I like that. That's good. Uh, it's like heel yeah. turning your brain. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I'm curious. Like, do you have to have, is there a pause? What, what, like, what's the, if you were to, all right, self-deprecate yourself right now, hit me with, give me the move. I, you know what? I just like. I just I think I'm not that funny, honestly. I'm I I kind of like tread water a lot. Wait, I'm goaded. It's not sassy enough. If you're gonna land this, you gotta be you're not like trying to be yeah. sassy. Yeah. No, you're trying to be. Sa- I think there's a lot of sass. You gotta be you like. Can I think you can be sassy, and that is one way of be. doing it. No, but you it's gotta like, be. You gotta be. No one's gonna like, believe that you're goaded. Wait, no one's gonna wait. believe that. So it'd be like, wait, I'm but goaded. But you're not trying to you, convince anybody else. Yeah. You're talking to yourself. Yeah, mm-hmm. and sometimes you need to sass yourself. You gotta be like, I got, I'm just not that funny. Wait, I'm goaded. You gotta like <laughs> really sell it. You just slap me in the face verbally with that delivery. <laughs> yeah. You gotta, I, you, gotta, you gotta sell it to people. <laughs> for me, for me, I, I always viewed it more like a it's a sudden realization. We're just yeah. like, wait, I'm goaded. Wait, I'm goaded. <laughs> no, 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 wait, no. why am I saying already, this about no, I myself? I think that's I'm better. Goated. I think that delivery is better. You already knew. You already yeah. knew. That's the thing, is deep <clears> down inside <throat> you knew you were the goat. And so yeah. you were just like, guess I'm not funny. Wait. I'm a good head. There we go. That's, that's, the, one. that's the one. That's the read. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's the one. Um, <laughs> in the it's in the can. Anyway, so your question is, what have I been doing lately? Um, <laughs> like, sure, yeah, like, that's oh, it. Have you been, been up to some playing anything, good... reading anything, watching anything? Um, I've been doing okay. Um, <clears throat> I've been uh just sort of streaming. Uh, lately I got back into GTRP. Mm. Um. And then also, uh, I finished, as we were talking about on pre show, I finished Lies of P fi- finally, which was one, a game I wanted to finish for a long time. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, oh, I started playing City of Heroes again. Um, because. Oh, my goodness. 
Okay, so I love that game forever yeah. and always, and it's probably one of my favorite MMOs of all time. And I don't know if you heard about this, but recently the um, private server, the the private server Homecoming, which is like the revival server of City of Heroes, mm -hmm. got the official license from NCSoft. So it's now an official private server that's free and has all the content, and now they can make new stuff for it. Like, they're allowed to, like, modify the game with, like, at their leisure and, like, change things and add classes and add powers and all sorts of cool stuff. So I'm very excited about that. Looking forward to that. Wow. Big time excited. I, re yeah. I remember a few years ago when you got a bunch of us to play City of Heroes and you were like, guys! It was funny. <laughs> That's where Marvin came from. I think that was Sput's character. That, that was really fun. That was, real, that was a good time. I was trying to Sherpa you all. Yeah, that was very um, fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a great time. Um, I had a really good time. I've been having a really good time with that. Um, rediscovering my love for that game. Um, playing my uh, my necromancy mastermind, Executive Scareman, the corporate lich. Um, <laughs> which I love that joke. I have a whole backstory for him and everything. Tell us. Um, and I wrote it. I've gotten comp. You want me to tell you the backstory? Try to. Try well, obviously. Yeah. Like. You want me like to read it? It's funny. Like, I wrote it out. <laughs> How long is it? I don't know, like a paragraph or two. Yeah, go for it. Read it to us. Okay, hold on. I have to log Are in. Are you first. worried that he made like a yeah. tome? Yeah. <laughs> well, you you you're restricted to I want to say like a, a thousand characters, so mm. it can't be that long. It's written on okay. in the game. I see. It's written in the game. Yeah. So that was one really cool thing about this game is you can like write your backstory and then like paste it in your your information panel when people like examine you. Right. Um. Okay. All right. Here we go. Okay, I'm ready. <clears throat> After pushing all the local businesses out of his city, CEO Jonathan Merrow received a mysterious book at his home. Delving into its secrets, he realized that death was only the beginning. Shedding his mortal form, he became a corporate lich. His necromancy was learned through the mysterious book, but his ability to squeeze every last drop of productivity out of his employees was something he already possessed, and only amplified by the foul magic. Declaring himself scareman of the board and running his company like a dark cabal, he soon realized that simply ruining people's lives through wage theft and labor exploitation wasn't enough. He needed a different kind of dark power. That's that's it. Dot dot dot. It ends in dot dot dot. I love that. <laughs> that was so really good. good. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I've gotten compliments about him before. And like all of his, because you can name your pets in this. So I have like Vice President, uh, Human Resources, which I think is particularly funny because it's a zombie, um, Middle Manager, things like that. Um, and then all the ghosts that I have are named like forced overtime, mandatory crunch, all <laughs> hands. Um, what was the other one? Uh, uh, graveyard shift. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I because I love coming up with like goofy superheroes. Like that's yeah. that's a pastime I've had since I was in elementary school. So, you know. I love that. Wait, I'm goaded. Wait, I'm goaded. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it worked. You got yeah. me. You yeah, got yeah. me. It worked. Yeah, see? Wait, I'm goaded. Um, but anyway, yeah. So that's what I've been doing. I've been doing a lot of that. Um, uh, practicing for a Guilty Gear tournament at the end of the month. Mm. Um, so I'm going to go be doing that. Have you still been doing um, that a lot? Yeah, I play off stream, though. I play I play, um, I play. play off stream mostly. Uh, but yeah, I still, I still practice. Um I got big into uh, Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising that came out mm. um, last month, and that was really cool. Uh, but then I was like, "Wait a minute! <laughs> I'm playing too much of this and not enough of the game I'm actually competing for. I need to stop." So uh, I stopped playing that and then started focusing <laughs> on Guilty Gear. But my to. my hope is that so many people have been playing too much of that and not enough Guilty Gear, so at least I'll do pretty well at the tournament. Are you still um, Are you still a Potemkin main? Of course, I'm never gonna switch. I'm, I'm too stubborn. I'll never, I'll never change. Even though he is technically probably the worst character in the game right now. Oh no! Um, yeah, he. That's not an uncommon situation. We're used to that. I'm used to that. Um, but no, it's uh, it's been fun practicing for that and getting ready. It's in Chicago, which I hear is getting hit by a nasty winter storm. Oh right now. my god! Yeah. Um, everybody yeah. that I know in Chicago is like, bro, all I do is yeah. shovel snow. <laughs> it's bad. Yeah. 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 yeah <laughs> can yeah. I can I tell you something? Sure. Hmm. Can you guess the one person from Chicago who hasn't said a damn thing? <laughs> <Come on door. laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know Chicago was having any trouble because that man, <laughs> I don't think he leaves his house. 
<clears throat> and when he does, he's, he wouldn't notice the snow anyway. He'd be like, a minor inconvenience on my way to get any, I don't have any salt to throw on my sidewalk because I just used it all making dinner. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I found I just, out. I just thought that was funny. This is a this is a side note. I found out today. Somebody was saying that their dad, growing up, would take ashes from the fireplace and put that on the ice, and it it oh. worked. It worked just like salt. Salt? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, Me neither. That's cool. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, my dad has this snowblower that's like <clears throat> twenty seven years old. It might be older than that. Um, it might be like 30, it might be 30 years or more old, old and it just, it's like constantly breaking, but he fixes it every time. He's like, ah, the timing belt broke. Ah, you know, one of the treads broke. So I had to fix it and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dad, just get a new snowblower. He's like, no, it still works. I'm like, it doesn't, <laughs> it breaks all the time. But you know, I mean, after like 30 plus years, he got his money's worth out of it. For sure. Oh no. Oh no. Oops. I'm there. Wait, am I there? <laughs> yeah, you're there. You're there. Sorry. Um, that's okay. But anyway, so, um, yeah, so that's... Uh, I'm that's... the goat. I'm goat. Uh, wait a minute. Should... Wait a minute. Don't say wait sorry. A minute. I'm say goated. I'm goated. Yeah. Wait a minute. I'm goaded. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, yeah, so I know that uh, uh, they're getting hit real bad right now. Yeah. Because I know some people in, in Chicago. I've never lived in a super snowy place. Really? No. Was Oregon not was Oregon not snowy? <clears throat> hmm? Was oh. Oregon not snowy? <laughs> God, that took me a sec. Uh I I lived in um a lovely valley that's called the Banana Belt cuz it's shaped like okay. a banana. Uh -huh. Um and that valley basically gets like no snow. So even oh, if there's well, snow up a little bit higher, the valley just doesn't get it. What we would get is mm -hmm. freezing rain. And oh, that, that sucks. That shit sucks. sucks ass. Yeah, it would break all of our trees and shit. It sucked. But we yeah. we would almost never get snow. It was so rare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's interesting. Yeah, we would get freezing rain. And one time I had to drive home late at night when it had freezing rained. And I almost fishtailed into like an entire line of cars. And oh I was like, God. okay, never mind. I'm going to drive four miles an hour the rest of the way home because <laughs> it was like late and there was like nobody on the street but i was like okay i'm i'm just going to play it safe here yeah um but yeah uh that does like the worst thing to drive in i hate driving in that snow is bad freezing rain is worse yeah 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 i'm really i'm really missing like standard la weather right now yeah it's well now it's 63 I, degrees i know sorry did you not want me to say that <clears throat> No, it's fine. And it's 63 where you're at? That's a lie. No, that's what it says on my on my phone. Oh, no, wait a minute. Maybe that's wrong. No, that's the forecast. Sorry. It's, <laughs> I was about to it's, say, I was it's gonna like say, 40 wasn't it like right 40? Now. Yeah, sorry. It's it's 39 <clears throat> degrees now. 41. Sorry, 41. I, it updated. We're doing it, baby. We're, we're giving you now, live weather record, update. Yeah. For the record, internet, you may be wanting to type right now, that's not cold. Where I'm at, it's like... Nobody in LA cares. It's cold for LA. All yeah, right. Cold so for us. Chill it. Mm -hmm. I remember like my cold. my second year here, I was at a New Year's party and it was like 55 and I'm like and I was like, oh no, I've already acclimated. Oh no. It's <laughs> yeah. already happened. That happened yeah. to me is yeah, about what five or six years into moving to LA when I would go home to Oregon, I'd be like, bro, give me a jacket. It's cold. Yeah, I know. I know, um, I know. <clears throat> yeah. Also, those of you who have lived in the same place your whole life, keep in mind, depending on where you live, you are going to have more or less resources to deal with different types of weather. When it, mm -hmm. For example, when it rains in Los Angeles, even just a little bit, something gets flooded. They're mm -hmm. just not built to drain water. <laughs> Every apartment I've lived in, the roof has leaked whenever it rains. Every really? single one. Yeah. And every single time they fix it, barely. And every single time I'm like, do I have to move? Is the roof going to collapse? What is? Sucks. And But yeah. the problem is it only rains. A great example is last year it rained two times and both times for a week straight and then nothing. Yeah. For months. Yeah. Like, that's just the way it is. It's crazy. Yeah. I I feel really lucky. I've lived in this place for almost two years now, and I've had no issues at all. Like I I feel like I found like 
the unicorn apartment like this place is <laughs> great the, the the um the management is really nice um it's affordable like i put a maintenance request in and like the next day they came and fixed it like i was like it's what magic this. world do you live in? I don't That's have any amazing. of that. I have, I have fiber internet. The whole building is like wired for fiber. I just got that. And it's yeah, nice. It, it it's is. I, I'm actually. I'm actually very thankful. Well, <laughs> did, I don't know if I ever told you my story about like about fiber. Um. So I you gotta have moved it. it. Yeah. Well, because the the manager told me when I moved in, he was like, "Yeah, we've got fiber in the building." I was like, "Awesome, love that." Big selling point, right? Um. And so uh. Um, I, they were like, yeah, uh, we have Spectrum and AT&T. So I called AT&T and I was like, you guys do fiber, right? They're like, yeah, we can hook you up with fiber. And I was like, oh, great. Um, here's my address. And they're like, oh, that doesn't exist. I was like, what? <laughs> they're like, yeah, we can't find your address. I was like, are you kidding me? They're like, yeah, what's your apartment number? So I gave them my apartment number and they're like, yeah, that, that doesn't exist in our system. We can't give you fiber. I was like, okay. So I called Spectrum and they're like, yeah, we can give you fiber. No problem. So they come in and they set me up and I like test the speed and I'm like, this seems slow for fiber. And I call them up and the, and I call up Spectrum and they're like, oh yeah, we don't do fiber at that address. And I was like, so you just lied to me. You just lied. You were just like, yeah, we could do that. So you just, you just lied to my face. And they're like, well, I don't think we did that. We just, it's just, you know, whatever. <laughs> oh my goodness. And so That's I called at t back and I was like, that's weird. Um, what, like, what's going on? Because the, the manager told me, yeah, AT&T should have the fiber set up for your, for your building. And so I talked to, like, the next level, like, the manager or whatever, and he was like, so our system is really weird. If you put apartment number, if you put, like, apartment and then the number for this building, it won't come up. But if you put unit and then the number, it will. So they had to put unit so instead stupid. of apartment. <laughs> and so I'm just like, great. So I had to, then I had to cancel my service with Spectrum and move over to AT&T. And they did come in and it did work. But from this point on, my, um, my wireless network has been called Spectrum more like rectum. And I will never change it. Uh, for the record, just to put this out there, mm -hmm. Spectrum was in my apartment already. Yeah, and they were like, right. you know... It's included with your rent. You get Spectrum internet and cable. It's great. And I was like, cool, cool, cool. It was like two up, five down. Yeah, it it's sad. garbage. It's garbage. It and so and so I called Spectrum and was like, what can I what can I do here? Mm -hmm. They're like, you know, for $139 a month, we'll bump you up to five bajillion down, 30 up. And Dirty like, up, oh. yeah, baby. I was like, cool, all right. <laughs> God. That's, that's the best I can do. So I can download anything except everyone limits, so it's pointless to have that. Yeah. And and then it was like, okay, I guess I got my 30 up, and I was fine, but it's 130 bucks. And I was like, this is such a ripoff. Yeah. The the apartment building this past year was like, we're gonna get a new fiber thing put in, and um everything's gonna be like wireless setup and this and this and this. It's gonna be easy. And I'm like, all right, well, how much am I have to pay for this? I'm like, oh, it's no different. Don't worry about it. It's it's included in the rent. And I was like, okay, so how fast is it going to be? They're like, it'll be very fast. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I love that. All right, give me a number. So I canceled you know. Spectrum, and I was like, good riddance, Spectrum. And the new speed, I swear to God, is like 400, 500 up, and like unlimited yeah. down. And I'm like, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Are you I kidding have, me? I have 350 down and up, which I think is like the base level, but it's like 55 bucks a month. And I'm like, let's go. Let's go. Um, it's, it's, yeah. it's, I'm not paying anything. Like, it, I'm baffled. They were like, oh, you can get even faster service. I'm like, well, I don't, I'm fine. I'm good. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. And yeah. that's the fact that Spectrum <laughs> has the audacity to be like, we're going to offer you an inferior product for. More Ridiculous money. Of money. Yeah, like, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I, insane. I, I have another story about Spectrum I probably shouldn't admit on stream, but I'm going to tell it anyway because it's very funny. <laughs> okay. So, um, so I, uh, when I left my old apartment or the old house that I used to live in, um, uh, I returned my router and modem to Spectrum, right? And I was like, enough of you. Fuck off forever. Um, and so, uh, 
I turned it in and then they sent me a bill for it for like $120. And I was like, no, I returned it. And they're like, well, we don't have a record of you returning it. I'm like, well, then that's your fault. Like mm -hmm. what? And they're like, no, you, you owe us $120. I'm like, I don't. And so I just didn't pay it. And they kept sending me a bill and kept sending me a bill and kept sending me a bill, you know, and they followed me through my forwarding addresses and everything. And eventually it went to collections and they're like, pay us $120. And I was like, no, <laughs> I won't. I will not do that. I don't owe you $120 for the router that I returned to you. And then like collections would call me and they're like, you owe us $120. I was like, no, I don't. And you know what they did? They just gave up. <laughs> like, hey guys, you want a life hack? If you owe a company like less than probably $300, $400, just don't pay it. They like it's going to cost them more to try and get it from you than it is for you to pay like to just pay them. Like literally, legitimately, they will not like they what are they going to do? Like take me to court, to hire a lawyer? That's going to cost them more than the money that it will take. This is not financial or legal advice. Don't take this advice. So can I tell you something? And I want you to know, brother, you're not alone in this. I, uh, yeah. when I returned my stuff, I had a, a router and the cable box and all. Mm -hmm. I gave them even not just the remotes and the router and the, the internet. Like also I gave them the wires that they get, like uh, the shit that was plugged in. The, I gave them everything mm -hmm. and I, and, even, and I got a receipt. Because I don't trust anyone. Yeah, I got the receipt. Yeah, yeah. And here's the best part. I still got an email that was like, you are missing two items. Please return them for the account to close. And I was like, "Yeah, oh, hell, I'm not. And so I messaged them like, I got the receipt. I turned stuff in. They're like, right, but we're still missing two things. And I was like, what two things? What two things? Like, well, you have another box. I was like, no, I don't. <laughs> like, according to us, you do. I was like, no, I don't. I, when I got my apartment, they were like, you can have two cable boxes. And I was like, I only got one TV, so I only need the one box. And they were like, well, then who has it? I was like, I don't know. Not my business. I don't care. And mm -hmm. they were like, all right, well, until this gets resolved, you, you're going to end up owing money. And I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> and again, they didn't even take it to collection. They just stopped. So either it resolved itself or they gave up. Yeah. But they were like trying to hit me with like you owe us X additional yeah. items. No, I don't. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, no, my, they're trash. Yeah. By the way, people asking me for my credit rating, I actually have excellent credit. Surprise. <laughs> um, I think it affected my credit rating by like one point. I think it went down from like seven hundred and sixty-two to like seven hundred and sixty-one. Um, and I was like, eh, oh well, that's that. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So whatever. Yeah. So. Uh, anyway, um, oh, I've been playing Neopets again. Speaking of economy. Neopets? I started playing Neopets again. Oh my goodness. I never played Neopets. <laughs> never? Never. Oh, it's so much fun. I somehow missed that whole chunk of internet life. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, really? You didn't play Webkins or no. Neopets or no. Guy Online or no. any of that stuff? No, okay. None of that. I only played Ebony because the sexy ladies on the internet told me to. The what did you play? I've never heard that. Do you not do you not remember the Ebony ads? Holy <laughs> shit. No. That was a time period. Ebony, the Ebony ads, which are like, come save me, my lord. And it'd be like a oh, sexy okay. woman. And yeah. then the game was like a clicker. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. You're like, Amazing. You're like, where's the sexy ladies in this game? No yeah, sexy wait a lady. Second. None. It was all a um, lie. <clears throat> that's like that's like my friend one time was like, hey, I, I found this like cool online chat room where you get to make an avatar and walk around and meet new people. And I was like, oh, what's it called? They're like, oh, it's called Furcadia. And I, I downloaded it and I, I installed it and I made a character. And I was like, this is like a furry thing. And they're like, no, you just make a character no, and you walk around. Of course not. It's not a furry thing. And I was like, I, I think this is a furry thing. I and just like, to select which genital I had. Yeah, like you know, you could you could be a mouse or a or a horse or a wolf. Mm -hmm. Um, you could pay money to get wings. Oh, could you I, be scaly? I think you could be a dragon, but that was like a premium thing. Could mm. you be like a what's a dolphin? A, a fishy? A skinny? A, a, a wetty? What is the yeah? I, could you be one of them? I think, it'd, a I, think it'd be a, I think it'd be a skinny. <laughs> yeah, like you're like a water dwelling furry or yeah. a wetty. I don't yeah. know. 
Yeah. A cartilagey? Would, well, because uh, a, a fish would still be a scaly, because they have scales, Jesse. A bubbly. Oh, I like a bubbly. A Ooh, bubbly. A bubbly is if you cute. were a bug, would you be a webby? Oh, that's uh, cute. If you're a spider, you're a webby. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. If you're yeah. a normal bug, you're like a like a buzzy buggy. A, <laughs> a buzzy is so good. <laughs> a silky. I think that's a seal. A silky yeah. is an actual animal that exists. Yeah. 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 Dolphins yeah. are mammals, but that's like you know, it's more fun to call yourself like a blowholey. You know what I mean? Sure. Sure. Yeah, I dig that. Um. Oh, what are you? So, what are you guys up to? I don't want to just talk about me. What are you guys? What's going on with you? Um, well, I went to Myrtle Beach for a week. Oh yeah, so I was Myrtle gone. Beach. How was, Myrtle was your Beach. Vacay? It was good. I've never, I've never been to Myrtle Beach. I don't think I've been to South Carolina really. Um, I'm trying to remember, but uh, why, why go to begin with? What so, was the choice there? so we were meeting up with some friends and their kids. They live in Nebraska mm -hmm. and we live here. And so we were like, okay, let's fly. Oh, I know who that is. I know who that would be, <laughs> yeah. who that is. So yeah. we were like, let's fly to somewhere on the East Coast because then it'll be a shorter flight for us. Um, and we can sort of like not meet in the middle, but you know, just, just yeah. make it a bit more manageable. Um, sure. Spoilers. So it's not the middle of nowhere. So you made the right call there. Right. So um, uh, the unfortunate thing is that there was no way to get to Charleston or Myrtle Beach without taking two planes. So it wound up being the exact same amount of time in a plane. <laughs> oh, raspberries. But that's okay. It it was fine. <laughs> but Myrtle Beach is uh Myrtle Beach is very I'm trying to think of how to put it. There is definitely like a beach touristy vibe. Uh um, sure, but like beach tourists for like divorced 40 something white people. Yes. I believe is what you were gonna say. Yes. I was gonna say not I wouldn't quite say it's like an, an elderly retreat, sort of a beach place, but like it's adjacent. And I think that that's a good way to put it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we had a lot a of like day drinking rose mm -hmm. from a like a bunch of ex wives getting together who are all married to the same man. And they're like, w I didn't get as much money as you, Cynthia. Yeah. Cougar Beach is a good way to put it. That's great. We went to so many places that, uh, yeah, had had a and no judgment, but but there's definitely a 11 a.m. drinking a mojito culture there, um, <laughs> and yeah, we uh, we got a place that was close enough that we could walk to the beach. So the kids wanted to go to the beach like every day, and it was very cute. Um, and we went on this crazy Ferris wheel uh, with three people that were scared of heights, and they all did very well. <laughs> So, you know, it was cute. It was fun. It was a nice, just like chill time. So, uh, okay. yeah. So that's what, that's what I did for, nice. for a week. And then when I got back, I immediately, uh, played, um, the new storyteller stuff. If you guys played the storyteller game, did either of you play that? Oh, I the watched storyteller. Yeah. It's, it's just called storyteller. It's a puzzle game where you are given a prompt that's like, imagine that this is the title of the book. Right, yes, 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 yes. <clears throat> yeah. And then, okay. yeah, and then you're given um, characters like, and you're given settings yeah. and you combine- Yeah, they're like stamps, right? Yeah, you combine like settings yeah. and characters in order to tell the story that is in the title. So it's a, yeah. it's a really cool puzzle game. Yes, Jesse. You know how, the only way I know this game, and it goes to show you the value of TikTok and YouTube shorts, is people playing this and seeing a clip of it in one of those scenarios? It has mm. been on TikTok a bunch. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. There's a there's a puzzle like that in We Were Here, the first We Were Here, where you have to go on stage and like put the 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 king out, and yes. the queen out, and then like yeah, the castle yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mm -hmm. uh, that's what it reminded me of. Just that one puzzle, but just like as a whole game. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, yeah, they yeah. they uh, the original game was like pretty short. They added some extra puzzles and uh, like a whole thing to do uh, after you've beaten the game that like adjusts some of the puzzles in a different way, which was fun. So I, I think it's really creative. I would love if they kept adding to it. I don't know if they plan to, um, mm -hmm. but but yeah, it's some of them are really easy and some of them you're like, what am I supposed to do? Like you really, <laughs> yeah. you really have to yeah. like mess around with. Because one of the games, one of the things that the game is really good at is 
um, each panel will obviously like remember what happened in a previous panel. So like if you take a panel that's a wedding and you have uh, two characters and they kiss, right? So then, then the book is like, okay, they're married now, right? And then you take the next panel and put one of the characters from the previous one and a different character in a wedding. The one that got married in the previous panel will be like, no, <laughs> like I'm, yeah. I'm married, you know? Yeah. Unless it, it specifically is, unless it's like hyper specific to that character, there are specific mm -hmm. characters that like will kiss anybody no matter what. And you use that to make the title that it's asking for, you know? Sure. So That's interesting. yeah, it's very fun. It's, it's really, really fun. Um, I like the stuff that they added. I would love if they added more. And then I played the Portal mod that came out, Portal Revolution. I saw that. I thought you were just playing Portal 2, but I didn't know that was a mod. It is a mod uh, with like full voice acting and a whole story that's set between Portal 1 and Portal 2. Um, it's longer than the first Portal game, which isn't hard. The first Portal game is like no. four hours. But really it's, short. Yeah. yeah, it's more like the length of, of the single player Portal 2. Um, and the puzzles were great. Uh, so much of the game, I guess this is a light spoiler, but like there are a lot of puzzles in that game where you don't control both sides of the portal, which I thought was so mm -hmm. creative. You do so many of these puzzles, you only control one. And you have to like mm -hmm. do certain things in the environment in order to like move the other portal around and stuff. I think they got sure. really creative with like adding new mechanics and stuff. They gave us ladders. God bless. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and like a whole like turning the power off and off and on again sort of system and just just like cool stuff like that. I thought it was really creative. Um, I don't know if I'm satisfied with how it ended, uh, mm -hmm. but oh, you beat it. I did. I beat it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, and it took like I don't know, like six point five seven hours, something like that. Oh wow, that's a that's a hefty mod. Yeah, yeah, and which is crazy because like obviously it's free. Yeah. And, and so much work must have gone into that. Like I just I yeah. can't I cannot imagine putting that much work into a mod. Yeah. Like what a labor of love for real. <laughs> like it was I mean, just so good. Yeah. I mean, I played, when I was doing Sonic games um, back in 2022, um, I did like a whole month of Sonic games, and I, I only played, regrettably only played one fan game, but it was a remake of the Sonic game for Game Gear, Triple Trouble, and I beat it in like, eh, like an hour and some change, mm -hmm. and I, even that, I was like, that's a long game, like that's a, <laughs> for, for just a fan-made game, like that's pretty long, you know, and, yeah. and it, it was like the, one of the best Sonic games I played that month. Um, but people who make those mods just, they really love it. You know, they really got to love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, did yeah. either of you guys play Mel, Mel? Por portal no, stories, that. Mel when that came no. out? No, I haven't played it either. And, and people kept bringing that up as like another amazing portal mod, but I never, oh, nice. I never played it. I want to play aperture desk job. The one that came out it's, to like promote the steam deck. It's funny. Yeah. yeah, it's really they, they, short, like half an hour long, like super. Yeah, super it's really short. short, but I just their writing is always so good that it's like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I really want to just to get the get the characters in the story or the characters in the experience and the jokes. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. But yeah, because I I finally got a Steam Deck and I've been just enjoying the hell out of it. You got mm -hmm. one too, didn't you? I Oops. did. I did you like get it? a Steam Deck. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, it saved my life when I was sick. Nice. Uh, but Raced. I I originally I I kept saying to Sam like there are so many games that I have on Steam that I would love to just sit mm -hmm. on the couch and play. Um yeah, because absolutely. you know, with our with our setup the way that it is like family wise, mm -hmm. um you know, uh, most of the time if Sam is is streaming, I'm inside because that's where our kiddos sleeping, right? Mm -hmm. So, um so yeah, I was like, I would love to play these games like on my, you know, on the TV or just like sit on the couch and play them um, without having to like have the laptop on my lap and like adjust it every five seconds because it gets too hot. And you know, that, that old chestnut. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Sam was like, you should get a Steam Deck. 
And I said, yeah, they're really expensive though. So I'll like wait. And Sam uh, got it for me for Christmas, which was very sweet. Oh, and that's so sweet. I know. And he gave it to me early, which again, I was so grateful for because like basically a week after he gave it to me, I got so unbelievably sick. And I basically oh. just like, lay my kid was sick at the same time so we would just lay mm. in bed and she would she would sit there and play um uh what's the what's the the tidying cat game a little to the left she loves that game she would play a little oh, nice. to the left and i would play backpack hero <laughs> and we'd both just nice. uh, just space out <laughs> like just feeling so sick and gross that's awesome um um nice yeah what about you what have you Pleasure been playing on it me? Mm. Um, so that's my like vampire survivor like machine. Um, <laughs> I've been playing like literally, uh, I've been playing, uh, what is it? Death Must Die, uh, Scarlet Tower. Um, oh, what else was I playing? Oh, I ended up like almost 100% in Cobalt Core on that thing. Really? Um, Cobalt Core yes. is such a good game. Holy Cobalt shit. Core kicked ass, and I bought it because I saw you playing it, and I was like, this looks fun. And honestly, the writing kind of sold me a little bit. On yeah. it. I was like, oh, I like the... The, the characters are very clever. Um, that's really funny. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that... that I, I almost ended up 100%ing that. Um... And, I always uh, forget that the two of you have such similar video game tastes that are in not some, even remotely close to what I like to play. In so some regards. In some regards. Mm, yes. I, I would say I would say that we have similar tastes in some regards. In some in other regards, I think there are games that I love and play that Dukes would never touch in a hundred years. <laughs> like what? Hit me. Um well, you know. I don't know. Would you play Orc Massage? <laughs> what is Orc Massage? I, I would play Orc uh, Massage. Don't Google that. I'm going I would to. play Orc Massage. Here's the thing. Is it Here's on the Steam? Problem. I don't hope go, not. Do not go. Do not, not. look looking up at this it. game. Dodger, no. I hope it's not. <laughs> don't, Dodger, no, Dodger, don't. Don't look this up. Don't, don't ruin this for do you. Do not do this. The fact this. that I know what this game is, Dukes, means it's not a good game to play on stream. Oh, you are an Orc giving a massage? Yes. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. That's sort of what yeah. it is. That's, yep. That's what I it is. I can't even tell what's going on in this. Oh, those are her wings. Oh, that makes sense. I was like, that's... Oh, man. That doesn't... That's not how bodies work. Yeah. I mean, bodies bodies be working in that game, that's for sure. Yeah, they anyway, do be. They, they do, do be, be do be do. <laughs> I do not like that I knew exactly what... The, that says a lot about where I am. I was like, yeah, I know that game. Yeah. The, oh, um, I didn't know about that game. Yeah. Also, I think the mermaid update for that game just came out. I haven't done that yet. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so oh, you're way, um, you know what? You know what? Never mind. You're way too yeah. invested. <laughs> yeah, I'm way too invested. Um, you know what other game I started update. playing recently what? that is actually really fun that dudes I think you would love is Mind Over Magic. Um, have you heard of this game? I played the demo of that game and I did not. Find, really? Did you bounce off it? I I didn't find it very intuitive. I had I really struggled okay. with it for some reason. Okay. Um, pitch it to me. It, okay. What? Wait. Pitch it to you or link it to you? Pitch. Pitch it. Pitch. Okay. Pitch it. Okay. So it's <clears throat> definitely um one of those like it is early access, but it's definitely like one of those kind of you have to fail a couple times before you kind of figure out what your strategy is. Mm. Um, and, uh, so, um, like, getting the right room, um, architecture is, like, really important. Okay. And so, um, it's fun sort of, like, building the rooms and, like, figuring out the requirements for the rooms. Because, like, some rooms can only be on ground floor. Others have to be, like, towered, which means they have to, like have only like one kind of access point so them have to be private um and so i really like having to like tetris everything together and make the correct rooms while still sort of like managing all the other stuff mm. um and i thought that was really fun like i really like the the school building part but then there's also the dungeon exploration rpg part i don't know if you got to that um no. so you <laughs> um you 
recruit students, right, to learn at the academy, mm -hmm. and then they advance in skill, and they have, like, individual uh, goals that you have to accomplish that will, like, power them up, and then you send teachers and students into, like, the under school, which is, like, the dungeon, and then there's, like, a little RPG combat thing where they, like, use the um, skills that they learned in school to, like, fight monsters, and then you explore down, and it gets, like, it gets more difficult, and as you explore further, you get rewards that can be used to research technologies. It's super fun. I really enjoy it, but it, it's very reminiscent of, like, it's sort of, like, um, Oxygen Not Included mixed with Dungeon Keeper. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so if you like either of those games, like, I could definitely <clears throat> easily pitch it, but if you don't like either of those games or that kind of, that style... Um, then it might not be for you, mm. you know, so I could see why you would bounce off of it possibly. I, I definitely, so many people have said that it's a great game that I should mm -hmm. try it again because mm -hmm. again, I only played the demo and maybe it's like, maybe things change sometimes <laughs> after mm -hmm. a demo has been released. So yeah. 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 Oh, um, sorry. I don't mean to Jesse, what have you been playing? <laughs> I don't want to just talk the whole time. Jesse, what have you been playing? Uh, well, first off, I've been watching. I'm going to shout this out. If you haven't seen Godzilla Minus One, get on Oh, it's, it's great. It's really good. It's so good. It's really, really like, good. It's shockingly so. I yeah. went in like, all right, this is going to be fun. And I left like, that movie was great. So yeah. I cannot stress it enough. Pick it. Uh, go. If, if, it, if you can't watch it in a theater, get it when it comes out on Blu-ray or whatever. Yeah. Go watch it. Movie kicks ass. It's really good. It's yeah, really good. very good. Um, yeah. if you can, if you can handle subtitles, it was a weird place to be. I was at the theater, with hanging out, watching the movie, hanging out with friends, and and behind us was a dad and his kids. They couldn't read the subtitles. So the entire movie, he's explaining it to them. Oh, but that's so weird. The, I don't know if it was the best thing or the worst thing because having a dad have to sum up what's happening on screen. There's a lot of emotions. Like it's not a lot of like. Ah! It's more like Japanese men crying because it's post World War II. Right. There's like a lot of emotions happening so on screen. There's a lot to explain mm -hmm. for context. And yeah. so the, the dad's trying to explain to these kids, and I was like, he is putting in the work. This is a valiant effort. Bless him. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was half the time listening to what he was saying because he's trying to, like, there's a moment where a character is like obsessed with the, you know, the common trope of I'm the one who survived. Shouldn't I be dead? What if I am dead? What if this isn't mm -hmm. real? Like that kind of, that's a scene playing out on screen. Right. And the dad mm -hmm. having to explain it to like three little kids was just, a, like, a, that man, being a parent, you must learn how to speak <laughs> hard things to kids yes. very quickly. Because this man yeah. was just like, well, he's sad because all of his friends are gone now and he's the only one left and he's gotten, and, and, even though he has all these people around him that love him and care for him, he's obsessed with the past, and that's not very healthy, which is why he's acting the way he is. And I was like, okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I was like, okay, right, Dad. Kid. Kids, do you know, are you familiar with the concept of survivor's guilt? Well, <laughs> Let me yeah. explain Meanwhile, it. Meanwhile, the yeah. kids did not, even though it was very nice, the kids the entire time were like, there's a lot of talking. Yeah. Where's the monster? And then when Godzilla, Godzilla? Show up, they'd be, when Godzilla show up and destroy the, they'd be like, yes! <laughs> Godzilla's like ravaging Tokyo, and they're just like, mm -hmm. yes, it was crazy. So that was Let's great. Go, that was fun. Nice. Um, I went back uh, since we didn't have an episode last week. I had mm -hmm. started playing Live Alive. Yo, if you've never played this, it might be such. It's a truly great RPG. Yeah. Um, yeah. Imagine multiple. It's old. It's like an old school RPG that only came out in Japan. They re-released it last year around the world with like a remaster and a remake. And um, it's multiple little stories. Uh, like one is a Street Fighter ripoff. Okay. One is a like a giant robot anime ripoff. One is a trope of like it ain't like uh, kung fu stories in china one is like a western what, like there's all different micro stories I, obviously they're gonna all come together in some way but it's very fun uh i absolutely cannot stress enough the music is great the music in the pseudo robot ultraman whatever level is 
like the perfect 1980s anime music. It is yeah. so everything about it is so good. <clears throat> um, apparently, it's one of the things that helped inspire Undertale. If that says anything, that uh, right. it is a treat. And each level is so. One example is the Street Fighter level. Literally, you're just doing Street Fighter boss fights, except it's an RPG thing. So mechanically, your character, you need to get hit by an attack to learn it. So you're doing like a blue mage thing. And mm -hmm. then you then use it Mega Man style on different, on different bosses. So if the first guy teaches me like Iron Fist, I go fight the boss that's like, I'm Wood Man. Like it is straight up the same vibe. Um, but And that's, you know, maybe like an hour of content. But then next, the next one was the future one. That was like four hours of a story. Because it's about like future gangs and you got to be the robot man. You got to learn your robot powers. But in that one, the mechanic is you can read people's minds. So you go around mm. to NPCs and you can read their mind to figure mm. out what they're really thinking. Interesting. There's um, the one that's in China that's the Kung Fu story. You play as the old master and you train three students. And then you have to pick one of those students to carry on your legacy. So basically you get a bunch of different uh, like... You can level them up and play with them, and it's very cool to see the way this game works and comes together. It's impressive. It's very cool. Uh, if you want an RPG to play, I think it's everywhere right now, so pick it up. It's it's not long, I don't think, so nice. that's a winner. And oh, then, yeah. uh, for some reason, I decided to jump back into... The reason was, I was at home, I was on my PlayStation 5, and I didn't want to download another game, but I wanted to like start clearing off games that I already had on my PS5 so I could get more space. Sure. And I uh, had Mortal Kombat 1, <clears throat> and I hadn't played since like launch. And so I went back, and I read the story, and I forgot how much fun the Mortal Kombat 1 story is. Um, for those of you who don't know, Mortal Kombat 1 is a reboot of the franchise using the ending of the last game, where in the last game, the two endings were either... Uh, Liu Kang or Shang Tsung rewrites everything. And um, right. this is one of those like uh, reboot things. And I will say, story was great. Johnny Cage, hilarious. Very fun. Yeah, yeah they always um, all write the him really funny. Yeah, all the characters are really good. And uh, I loved that. And then I was like goofing around in their invasion system, which I thought was going to be more like Street Fighter VI, which has a great single player. But... Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like you run around Johnny's Mansion or different islands uh, of things, and there's seasons, and you just fight guys. And so I was like, well, you know what? I'll do this. And, and you can unlock items and get gear and outfits for your characters and stuff. And so I decided to do it all on uh, as Omni-Man. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Let me tell you. <laughs> Omni-Man does not belong in that universe. He is so busted. So what you do as you play through the invasion system in Mortal Kombat 1 is you can add stats to your characters and level up and get like things to put on you. It's like its own special bonus thing. Is it kind of, it's kind of roguelike -y or uh, kind of, it gets harder and harder the more you progress, but it's not nearly as hard as a roguelike, but if you lose, it like boots you like, and Oh, and you can pick someone. So I picked, I think frost or someone to be my partner. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I want like an ice thing to stop them and then I could like beat them up. But what you do is you you add stats to your character. So every time you level, you get five more points to add. And I just put it all into attack. Oh and God. so Omni-Man oh has an attack where he charges across the screen and appears behind you and punches you in the face. And it does half their life now. <laughs> I put oh no stats goodness. in anything else. All he was flying. So, and then because I had to learn them, I learned all of Omni-Man's fatalities. <clears throat> One is he literally squeezes their head till their eyes pop out and is the grossest thing I've ever seen. And the other is the scene from Invincible where he holds them in front of the train, the train and yeah. like hundreds of people die. It is so violent. And I was like, this man's built different. I Everyone else in this game sucks. Omni-Man's busted. He is, I use him and I'm having the best time. I'm going through the invasions. It's like season three is like the season of Sub-Zero and I'm just like, you're going to get wrecked, Sub-Zero. I'm about to put you on ice. Like, I'm just having a blast. Is, that said, I have not touched competitive online at all, <laughs> and I won't. No. Is it is it J.K. Simmons doing Omni-Man? It must be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it makes it even better because it's nice. just he's so sassy. Every Oscar time he, winner J.K. Simmons. 
Yeah, it's very good. He's very good. The one thing that's weird is every person. So I guess like the next characters coming are, um, I mean, that's, I mean Homelander's one of them, but uh, I can't remember the yeah. the Patriot. What the hell is John Cena's character? What is that character? Oh, uh, peace peacemaker. Peace peacemaker. peacemaker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Peacemakers come, but like everyone is doing their voice except for the Homelander guy, and I can't figure out why because he's done game voices before. Hmm, like I don't really? know. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know why he's um, not the voice of that. What's his but name? But everyone else uh, is in the game, and Anth Anthony Starr. That's right. Yeah, he's an amazing, amazing actor, and yeah, so I don't, I would have paid him the money to get him in, but whatever. You know. You just you just hate him so much in the boys. He's really yeah. good. He's perfect in that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. He's so good. A few yeah. different people are saying that uh, the actor says he wasn't contacted about it. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't it's know. Weird. I don't know why. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. They, uh, I think they just, you know, probably couldn't afford him. <laughs> they were like, yeah. we, can't we can't pay for it. They know. can't afford him, but they can afford J.K. Simmons? Like I don't, I mean, I don't know what J.K. Simmons' VA rates are. When he showed up in Baldur's Gate, I was like, "What?" So, you know, I have no clue. I think we're at, we're at the same agency. He and I, we are. Yeah. Oh. We, have, we, have the same, we have the same voiceover oh. agent. Yeah. You guys should Aww. get together and start a jazz band. I'm sure that. Would be <laughs> yeah, I think that would go really well for yeah, me. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it should be fun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. um yeah, my 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 problem with uh like the single player story stuff with fighting games is typically it gets to a point where it's like too hard for me to progress. <laughs> sure. And mm -hmm. I never find out the end and I have to look it up or just like watch somebody else play it, you know? The last I'm going to say hour, but probably really 30 minutes, but it felt like an hour. The last, however, the last chapter of Mortal Kombat 1 is like 18 fights in a row. And oh, they are God. all progressively harder. And unless, like, I'm not going to lie. In order to get through it, I turned it on easy mode. I don't give a shit. I was like, mm, yeah, dude. not on time for this. I was yeah. getting stomped. So, yeah, yeah I was like, no, nah, I'm just going to beat this thing. That's, but, um, they should, honestly, they should just do a Guilty Gear style and just have it be a whole anime. Like the story mode for Guilty Gear is there's no fighting. It's just literally like a whole produced anime that's like <laughs> five hours long. It I, I don't want to spoil the end of Mortal Kombat One, but it feels pretty. An it's anime as hell. The last chapter is crazy, and so it's right up my alley of like, all right, we're getting weird. Let's go. Let's go nuts. Loved it. Yeah, sure. Big fan. Makes sense. Mm. Yeah, when you get all timey wimey. You can do some crazy stuff. So <laughs> I think they did a great job. Um, nice. still think six, Street Fighter Six's whole single player presentation was significantly better, but oh, yeah. uh, it was it fun. amazing. Yeah, 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 it was amazing. Um, you know what game I picked up recently hmm. uh, and beat because I remember watching you play it, Dodger, was Mini Healer. Um, oh my goodness, Mini Healer! I've yeah, what is Mini Healer? Jesse, have you never played Mini Healer? You would actually I, love this game. I do not play nine the games that the group of the two of you. I've said this before. <laughs> okay. You guys right. play games that I've never heard of, and then I'll watch either. Honestly, one of the two of you. I can't even pretend. My stream time. It, here's what I watch on stream. This is a fact. Mm -hmm. Someone that I just rated that I mm -hmm. watch for a few minutes, and then I'm like, I got stuff yeah. to do. Or. Yeah. I watch Dodger play a goofy game I've never seen before in my entire life, and I'm like, I don't know what the hell this game is. And then everyone tells mm -hmm. me I need to play it, and then when I play it, I'm like, I don't even like this game. Or I watch you, Octo, play mm -hmm. some sort of Souls-like, and mm -hmm. I watch you literally stomp it. And I'm like, well, I could play that. And then I try to play it, and I'm like, I, I hate these stupid-ass games. <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> or I'll watch Krendor play Kaizo Pokemon. Iron Mon, Ruse, yeah. And I'm like, well, this guy sucks. And that's it. That's the only people I, that's the only <laughs> watching I'm doing on this entire platform. It's just, um, I know, I know what I like. And I yeah. also know that what the games like? the two of you like, I'm like, mm -mm, that's a trash that's game. That's not okay, always true. Like, let me, let me explain mini healer to you. So mini healer is a single player, uh, MMO dungeon simulator, essentially, but you're the healer. So you are in charge of healing your group. 
but you can spec into like different talent trees, which can change the type of healer you are. So there's like a druid talent tree, a paladin talent tree, a priest talent tree, and an occultist talent tree, which is sort of like the DPS one. But um, you can mix and match, and you can like make your own spec and like upgrade abilities and get gear and like gear yourself up. Uh, and it's like super fun. And um, you, it's just a bunch of boss fights, right? But like the beginning boss fights are very simple. It's just like your DPS attacks, right? And then like eventually it gets farther, and there's mechanics where like you have to dispel certain debuffs, and then like. Then it gets even harder where you have to dispel stuff on the boss, and then you have to, like, dispel stuff on your party. Um, and then, like, debuffs will, like, bounce around, so you have to, like, watch debuffs and things like that. It's really cool and so you're very... you're, like, explaining an MMORPG, yeah. but without playing an MMORPG. Yeah, it's, yes, it's more essentially. Of like a, it's more of, like, a management game. So yeah, like yeah, you yeah. Are, you are the healer, and yeah. the computer plays as all of the other characters, and you have to, like... Yeah manage keep them alive yeah you have yeah. to keep them alive by by mm -hmm. um choosing different stats and different like talent tree mm -hmm. stuff and yeah yeah can i ask a real quick question you sure doctor yeah. what what job do you play in final fantasy 14 healer i'm a white mage so would you say this equates to that or would no. you say it's a different experience different experience okay that's what I'm trying to get at. Is it like I'm just playing an MMO or is it <clears throat> a, like a management game where I'm like, all right, well, I have to put in 15 points into my X heal and my lightning bolt or like, like what's the what's the like, what's the gameplay loop? Besides what Octo was saying with the boss fights, when I'm not fighting a boss, what am I doing? You're in sort of your like hub area. And you're, and you're managing your equipment and stuff. Yeah, you're managing like who has which equipment, um, you know, uh, adjusting your talent tree, all of that sort of stuff, and making sure that like you are healing in the way that you want to be healing when you're inside mm -hmm. of the dungeon, because a lot of it yeah. happens like automatically. It's sort of an ARPG once you're in the boss fight for the most part. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's fun. All right. I like it. It's on I the know. wish list. It's there. It's yeah. Done. Yeah. It's it's fun. Like I I actually surprised myself. I played it off stream, but like I so I got surprised with how much I liked it. Like it was it was really fun. Um, and oh. uh, yeah yeah, it's neat. It's a good time. I for, I totally forgot. I played uh the Invincible. If you Dodger, you'd love this game. What is that? Um, it is a game based off a book, where the premise is that you imagine a alt reality. Uh, where everything's still like 50s tech, but you are a bunch of, uh, I'm going to assume Brits, I don't know, but um, you are on a ship and you're headed oh. back from an expedition and you wake up to discover that the astrogator, the, the person who's your pilot, mm -hmm. uh, has stopped at a planet mm -hmm. and he's like, hey, this enemy faction, which is basically like, retro futurism russia is gonna be here on this planet in 14 days and they're looking for some cool stuff let's go on this planet and like we'll we'll explore it first and we'll get all the information and then next thing you know you wake up on the planet like what the hell just happened and the and your crew is missing and it's one of those like i guess we have to figure out what the hell's going on it is straight up that sounds um, cool it's like space fire watch is the best way I can describe mm. it. Sure. The this has it's a, the exact same vibe. This has a really cool retro futurism vibe going on. I like that a lot. Yeah, it's great. And um, it has, as far as I can tell, many, many endings. I'm not sure how many, but I completed, I did two endings and they are very different. The two endings <laughs> I did were like dramatically different. Um, and so... I'm very curious to see what you will do because there's a lot of choice. Uh, a lot of it is like, do you go here? Do you do this? Do you go to this area? And everything, someone in chat just said 11 total endings. Mm -hmm. So I love that about it. But more importantly, I love that it's just like a slow burn mystery. Cool. Where, so a great example is you're on the planet and um, it has oxygen but it's one of those things where if you take off your mask for too long, the methane in the air will start to just drive you nuts. Mm. Right. So 
there's a moment where the game was like, you can either take off your 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 mask and give your oxygen to someone else, or you can keep it. And I need to know what the other option does. I'm not gonna say what I did or okay. what, but I need to know what because it's so dramatically. Like, I would love to know what happens if you do one or the other. Uh, I did one; it was awesome, but also just okay. So. Yeah, I think it's definitely a game where the more you put into it and the more time you take to explore, the more you get out of it. That kind mm -hmm. of vibe. But, um, yeah, pretty cool. That seems super cool, yeah. I think you'd like it. I don't, it took, like, uh, maybe six hours to beat. Maybe seven. Oh, wow. That's a decently yeah. long game. For, for, yeah, there's, for there's a, a moment where I thought the game was over, and then it was like, oh, you are only <laughs> finishing act one. And I was like, what? Yeah. That's how I felt playing not, Portal Revolution. It was like, all right, so it's the end now. And then the game was like, no, it is not. New chapter, baby. <laughs> I Can I tell you a funny story about the original Portal? So, spoiler alert for the original Portal. There's a part where when you finish all the test chambers, you walk into that platform and, like, you go into the fire and GLaDOS is like, sure. hey, congratulations, idiot. You won. Now die. Now die, uh, yeah. And then, and then uh, you go into the fire I thought that was the end of the game. I didn't know that you were supposed to th shoot a portal like out off of the over the railing, like to leave and go into the utility tunnels. So I was like, "Well, cool, that was a short game." And then I just stopped playing. And like my friend messaged me, was like, "Oh, did you like Portal on on Steam?" And I was like, "Yeah, it was kind of short though." And they're like, "Yeah, I uh, I like the part where you like confront Glados and everything." And I was like what huh and they're like and i was like i thought you're just supposed to die <laughs> this was like a week later right so i just accepted that, that was the end of the game That's but so no funny. that was not the end of the game yeah i thought that was it but there was so much more what a yeah. what a pleasant surprise though for you <laughs> yeah i was like there's more game yippee there was more game to play yippee. yeah so was... i don't know what that says about you as a person that you were just like yeah, I guess sometimes you die in the fire. Sometimes you just die. Sometimes you just like. Go what the was the message dead. you got from the game? Like when you were done, you were like, "Well, I guess you can't beat technology." I guess that's yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. I thought that was just like I guess it. I'll die. Yeah, you know, I was like, "That's weird." Okay, <laughs> well, that's right. a weird ending. No credits or anything. I just die. <laughs> okay. Okay. You didn't stick yeah. around. You didn't. You're just like, well, I don't need to see me burn. Just yeah, like, that's it. I'm out of yeah. here. Yeah, I was like, well, GG, I guess. <laughs> Um, no, but, uh, yeah, that was, that, I was happy that there was actually an ending of, of Portal. Yes. That I got to experience the end of it. Yeah. Um, um yeah, I'm, I'm trying, I want Sam to do the Portal co-op, Portal 2 co-op with me. I've done it before, oh, but when yeah. it, like, just came out. So I don't remember I any of the puzzles. That. And I figure, you know, uh, all relationships could have a healthy dose of just absolutely hating each other because of a puzzle game. Right. Um, right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to think with portals. There's no time for hate. Think with portals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Faster. Only, only think faster. <laughs> Atlas and Peabody can guide you to the end. Mm -hmm. I never, I never did the, I never did the co-op, but it always looked really cool. I've seen a lot of people do it before, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually recently booted up uh what is it portal with ray tracing um like i the, saw you know, that i watched yeah. that that was amazing that shit was so funny i actually made it pretty far in that i was surprised my computer could handle that um that thing is a, a monster on your computer on your on your machine it is like beastly it takes so much uh resources to to run that mm. uh, but it's fun it's it's cool to like re-experience it and be like, whoa, and just like look at the different metal panels on the walls and be like, whoa, whoa you know, like dude. just yeah, just to see this, I don't know, how old now? 14 year old game, 15 year old 14 year old game, I think. Yeah. It's like have ray tracing and like beautiful, beautiful 4K textures. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I forgot that I need fun. to go back and play Crisis 2 again. I forgot that Crisis 2 was like the computer breaker. Yeah, if you had a yeah. PC and you had Crisis 2, that thing would set your motherboard on fire. I want to go back with the with the brand new computer I have that's like mm -hmm. a killer machine. Yeah. I want to go back and turn on Crisis 2 and crank everything up and be like, let's go. If my yeah. computer dies, it dies. But I need to yeah. see. I want to know. That's 
that's what I did with Cyberpunk when I got my new um when I got my new machine. I booted it up. I was like maximum, you know, and just like turned everything up. It looked great. It's awesome. Yeah. Um. This is, if you're if you're like doing a street level walk through Night City, it's gorgeous. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, okay. So before Crisis Two, I felt like it was Crisis, right? Like that was the the benchmark. It was like Crisis, yes, Crisis. Yeah. Do you remember what it was before Crisis? I do, and I think this is so funny. I talk about this on stream constantly. It was Doom Three. It felt like every single like benchmark was run with Doom Three for some reason. Hmm. That was like the benchmark game. And but this was in like I don't know two thousand and yeah it's like when your computer had a had cow spots on it yeah yeah gateway PC yeah it was oh for God. so long you and just it, unlocked it, something crazy yeah yep. <laughs> yeah yeah dude I tell, dude I could tell that when I said cow you were like what is he talking about and then mm -hmm. it hit you it like you can see it hit you yeah 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 dude yeah gateway PCs man gateway yeah. was the gateway. I didn't I, uh, get, they sold you on it because they were like, we'll give you these speakers that every person had for free. Mm -hmm. Those yeah. speakers, those white, tall speakers, I can just see them. Yep. 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 Those are the yeah, ones. I the cow those. computer. The yep. cow computer. Why mm -hmm. did they do that? Because they were from, I think, South Dakota or something. And there were like a lot of yeah. cows. There's some, some place that had a lot of cows in it. It was some like Midwestern state. And so they, they, they're. Mascot was a cow. Yeah. I don't, man, I don't know what happened to them versus like Dell. Like there's uh, suddenly Dell Dude. became the one everyone was buying. You're getting a Dude, Dell. You're getting, Dude, a, you're Dell. getting a Dell. <laughs> yeah. But like what? what Justice for that. that Dude, he happen? got arrested. He got arrested for having weed. I hope, I hope he, I hope he got that expunged from his record. Cause that's fucked up now. I don't know, man. Mm -hmm. And then they PC, like computers on TV kind of stopped. I guess yeah. everyone's like, "Look, they're gonna buy it anyway." There's not any PC ads anymore. Oh my goodness! I mean, they don't. Well, because there's not really like. I mean, I guess there's not like a singular oh, yeah. PC company. You know? Do you think it's because when we grew up, it was the advent of like you want you you want a computer in your home? Yeah. Like, cause yeah. I know that when I like, was like, like personal was, computers were a new idea. I mean, like the concept was always there, right? But it wasn't until like the, when AOL kicked up, at least in the States, if you had a computer, you were the biggest nerd burger who ever lived. <laughs> and suddenly it's true. It's true. If you had a Nintendo yeah. cool kid, if you were like, I'm playing DOS boot on my windows 95 PC, people would be like nerd. Yeah. And so. I wonder if there was a moment when it's probably AOL, to be honest, at least here in the mm. States, where it was like, you want to be online. You want to talk to strangers. You want to go to a chat room and ASL. You want to do all like, <laughs> yeah. And suddenly people were into it. And I don't know if it's because you didn't have to, you didn't have to do that yeah. shit anymore. And, and suddenly it became like easier or fun to get. I, um, I don't know what it was. I'm sure Excuse someone me. out there. Jesse, I was being cool on AOL chat rooms and role playing Tenchi Muyo. So like, let's, uh, I was let's role get playing as my Sailor Moon OC. So nice. Who was cooler, yeah. really? Yeah, let's let's be let's be honest. Like <laughs> we were not the nerds here. We no, were the, I was we role were playing cool as a 35 year old mother of three, uh, mm -hmm. seducing. What? Huh? What? Huh? Finish finish your joke, finish Jesse. It. Finish finish no your jokes. plate. What do you mean? There's no jokes, jokes baby. What no jokes, jokes here. I'm talking, I'm talking yeah. truth. Are you goaded you know or not, me? Jesse? No, actually, Wait, I, couldn't, I couldn't do any of that. <laughs> In fact, my screen name on AOL probably shouldn't have been allowed. It literally, this is no joke. Because when I first made my AOL account, I was like a kid. It was my name and my birthday. <laughs> oh my that was God, my what is AOL wrong account. with you? That's not even a joke. I thought it was, was going to be like... And Full birthday. Oh my! I goodness. thought it was gonna be like like something like lewd or something, but no, no it was just your name and no, birthday. No, it was even worse. My full name and full birthday. I didn't. Th I'd be like, well, 
It said I needed numbers because Jesse was taken. So I mm. literally wrote my name and then full ass birthday. Oh, and I don't God. know how I made it through that. But yeah, I couldn't even, like, what was I going to do? Be mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, my name's uh, Janice. And I <laughs> am, like, I, could, I couldn't even do that if I wanted to. Right. It's yeah. literally, I think I'm, about that all the time. I'm the so, internet was different. The, it, for real. And like, um, there's actually like such a huge, if, if you're, uh, if you absorb like, like parenting stuff online at all, which I do mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. Um, there is like sort of a funny conversation going on right now because of like this generation of parents being like, we are the first generation that actually like has some kind of internet literacy to be able to try mm -hmm. and keep our kids safe, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and just people recalling like, dude, the sort of shit I was getting up to online no, <laughs> that yeah. was not. No, no, no. That was not. No, no, no. No, no one should have let me do that. I had yeah. 18 boyfriends on AOL Instant Messenger. And, you yeah. know, like, it was just, it was a whole thing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the, the conversation about, like, okay, so what is what is the the safer way, right? Like, how do mm -hmm. you talk to your kids about that without them just rolling their eyes at you? you yeah. Know? It's, yeah. yeah. Is there, like, this is why I'm not a parent and probably never will be because I'm just like, look, they're going to find it anyway. Every time that that people have tried to put Roblox up for kids, they move <laughs> on to like another platform. It was yeah. WhatsApp for a little bit and then Snapchat and TikTok. Like every time it's just a new platform and parents are always like struggling to keep up because kids, I we were all kids. We had it easier. Because if mm -hmm. I want to get into trouble, I just get on my bike and go get in trouble, yeah. right? There's a yeah. difference. I did, and yeah. I wasn't worried about someone filming it. When yeah. I was, yeah. oh boy, the late 90s were a troubling. I got in trouble a lot. And I probably would be not. They put me in internet jail. <laughs> or every kid's an asshole. Let's just, like, that's clear. Yeah. And I feel bad that now they're just all filmed being assholes because that's like a permanent thing for life. Yeah. I lucked out. I lucked out. And so yeah. I don't um I don't I don't think it's possible to truly monitor everything your kid's doing. The best you can do is teach them what's right and hope they listened. <laughs> that's probably it, really. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's so true. Um yeah, I I didn't, I don't think I ever really got into any trouble on the internet, not, at least not outside of badly role-playing Tenchi Muyo characters. Mm. I didn't, I didn't really do anything, like, I just went on drawing boards, because there was, like, a really primitive drawing board on this one character shrine website that I would frequent very often, and um, I would draw Digimon on that, and then I met a bunch of other people who liked drawing Digimon, and that's it. Amazing. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, okay. We didn't have mm -hmm. a we didn't have a, a an an early two thousands, late nineties nerd off right now. <laughs> okay, yeah. What is okay. what is I'll, I'll start I'll admit to some stuff. What okay. is the single nerdiest thing you were involved with during that time period? I got you. I'll start. Here we go. Two things. One <laughs> I made anime music videos like a mofo. I wow, put out okay. so many AMVs. Uh one of them blew up to the point where I don't even the internet owns it now. If you look up the Final Fantasy VIII, uh, whatever that video was, that thing is huge and mm -hmm. it's awkward because I made it at the time for a forum and I did one of those like, for all my ladies on the forum. It's so, yeah. it's so cringe. Enjoy okay. that. And two, I was heavily involved in the modding community for Star Wars TIE Fighter. I made Whoa, shit, okay. multiple, Amazing. multiple... Tie fight. The problem is, it's going back now. I can't play it. I games have become too easy for me. Tie fighter. You had to use your whole keyboard to play. Yeah, <laughs> every button true. was like a shield or a laser setting. Mm -hmm. I would make someone made like a thing where you could go in and mod the game, and so we would. I would make like my own stories and I'd be like, "This is the Imperial class star destroyer, Dark Star," <laughs> and the like. It was crazy, dude. Yeah, that um, shit. I love TIE Fighter. I, I still have meant to go back because I wanted to do a playthrough where I do all the secret missions because I was never able to, like, 
do all do all the secret missions when I first initially played through that game. But I feel like to really enjoy that game, you need like a flight stick or something. Cause it, but oh, yeah. to get it to, to Too get much. it to work with that is like really tough. All right. Those are my, money. those are my early two thousands, late nineties nerdetry. Uh, okay. My, I, mine aren't like too extreme. Really? Uh, I learned, uh, like my original base knowledge of HTML was because I would go to like Clamp and Sailor Moon fan websites, and I would look oh, at yeah, gamer. I would like look at the HTML for that website, and then I would like copy paste it and adjust it. <laughs> um, so yeah, my, my yeah. friends and I all like begged our parents for like a GeoCities domain so that we could like make our own fan websites and stuff. Mm -hmm. um so that was pretty fun that was really fun and then uh the other thing is that at the time guys you don't know how lucky you are to be able to just watch anime to just watch it oh to just God, watch yeah. it whenever you want holy shit and any anime any anime you want you can Bro, see it now. any genre yeah. where yeah. if it exists you can find it that's crazy um, mm -hmm. at the time I would go on to, um, I would, uh, go into MIRC and there were like specific people that you could contact on MIRC and they mm -hmm. would have a list of the different anime that they had mm -hmm. at their house that they had fan subbed yep. and you, you could, get the, the VHS tapes. yes. And you could get yep. their address or PO box or whatever. And you yeah. would send them blank vhs tapes and a check yep. Yep. <laughs> and they would put the anime on the vhs tape for you and then ship it back yeah absolutely that's, crazy i did that, that so much that was all of the anime I, I was able to watch that's how i watched dragon ball for the first time was i was that, about yeah. to say that one yeah. of my friends in high school collected hundreds of vhs tapes of dragon ball yeah <laughs> not His dragon ball z bedroom. by the way because when I was watching, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. You. Continue, Jesse. No, no, no. You're right. It was it was Dragon Ball Z. That's all. I'm, yeah. No, no, no. It was it wasn't Dragon Ball Z for me. It was oh, Dragon mine Ball was original. Dragon Ball Z. No, no, no. Because Dragon Ball Z, this was the Ocean dub that was at that time. The Ocean dub was airing on Toonami, at least when I was watching. <sighs> yeah. So like Dragon Ball Z, you could watch, but only the first part up to the Ginyu Force part. But because that's when that's when they stopped. That's when they stopped when Ocean it. stopped dubbing it. So. The yes. Dragon Ball was almost impossible to watch. Like, you could not find it anywhere. So I wanted to watch Dragon Ball. And so a friend and I went halvesies, and we, like, did this thing that, that Dodger was saying where we would send the blank VHS tapes in, and they would record them on, they would copy them onto VHSs, and we would watch Dragon Ball that way. So, yeah, that's how I watched it. Uh, um, the, the, other, yeah. the other way, um, once eBay became more of a thing, was, mm -hmm. was buying, like, knockoff subtitled DVDs from, like, China or something of different anime. I got a couple different box sets that way. <laughs> Convinced um, that there's a certain generation. I'm not sure. Like, it's, it's a very specific five-year period where everyone remembers going into like either a Sam Goody or <clears throat> one of those mall stores. Suncoast, and in the coast back, to coast. Sun, yeah, Suncoast. in the back corner. In the back corner, they had one anime section. And that mm -hmm. anime section was so hit or miss. It was either like you'd find the full version of Escaflone or <laughs> the tentacle porn. There was no in between. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. It, my... Like, my my son coast had Evangelion, Ninja Scroll, and Ninja Scroll, yes, and God, Ninja like Scroll. I yeah. think they had. I can't remember what else. Those were the two that I remember seeing most frequently. But I have every single Evangelion uh, VHS tape still. I have I have the full the full run, and they're on white VHS tapes, which I thought was oh the coolest God. shit. I wonder still if my have parents those. still have my VHS tapes of Dragon Ball Z. That would be amazing. Yeah, because yeah. they had a picture when you put them all together. They it made, a made big the picture. dragon. Yeah, yeah, the full thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was sick. I remember the um, when VHS tapes would do that because there's more real estate to put on the back mm -hmm. of the spines. Um. Okay, my yeah, my thing. Can I say my thing that of I did? Of course you can. Okay, yes. I have two. So 
you were talking about like, oh, you'd beg your parents for a GeoCities page. My dad had a, a website hosting service that he let me make a website on Amazing. a page. And I made my best estimates for Dragon Ball Z power levels from when I, the beginning to when I had later, like later on in Namek, the farthest I'd seen. And I wrote up for each character about what I thought their power level was. I love that. And I made, and I made that. And lay, so a little after that, I became obsessed with um, the game Black and White, like the God Sim game. Okay. Good game. Solid game. I really loved that game a lot. Mm -hmm. I spent so much time in that game that I went to a website and uh, there was like a, a black and white, um, uh, like sort of like a knowledge repository website for things that people knew about the game and they would like post in the forums or whatever. And it was like for fan stuff, people would post fan art of their character or of their god or whatever. And there was a section where you could write song parodies about black and white. And I submitted like five different song parodies. That's amazing. And they were all so bad. And I listen, I was cringe, but I was so free. I loved that game. I adore. I spent like dozens of hours, more than that, in playing that game. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I was just I was like super obsessed with it for whatever reason. That was the one that I that I hitched my wagon to. Can I ask a question to the both of you? Because I feel like we're in the same space here. Wait a minute. I'm in... goaded. <laughs> you are. That's true. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, that's what I've heard. If you just keep saying yeah. it, I'll believe it. Yeah, um, yeah. In the early 2000s, were either of you on... I'm trying to think what the other one was. It might have been AMA. I don't think that's what it was. But the Voice Acting Alliance forum. No. The um, There were all these forums that mm -hmm. were like... To this day, the people that I met there mm -hmm. are some of the biggest names in voice acting right now. Wow. It's crazy to me, uh, all the people that I know specifically from that. Mm -hmm. um, or I'll see someone post a thing about it. I was like, you were on that? I didn't know that. And they're like, you were on that? I was like, yeah. Uh, except I would do like fan dubs of RPGs. Right. Okay. And so the first one I ever did was Vagrant Story. Because, you know, there's no dialogue in that. So I made a fan dub of the Vagrant Story. And the team that made Vagrant Story that went on to make Final Fantasy X was like, that's really good, bro. That's really good. It's crazy to me that that that's was funny. a place on the internet that, like, a bunch of nerds got together. And I'm not even joking. I would say more than half the people that you, listener or viewer, love in the world of voice acting came from there. That's probably it's true. Crazy. That's crazy. Awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. I was never, I was never involved in that. Uh, in that, I didn't get into actually. Like, I always wanted to do it, but I didn't actually get up the courage to start doing it until like 2009, 2010. Mm -hmm. And like, my friend and I went to Guitar Center and I bought a, a Sterling ST99, which was like my first um, XLR microphone. And yeah. uh, then I started recording things after that and posting them online. So I didn't really start doing it until like late 2000s, early mm. 2010s. But um, yeah, uh, that I, I know a lot of people who did come from there. I think Kira came from there. I think Kira was on the Kira yep. was mostly on Newgrounds, but I think she was also on the VAA. 100% from oh. there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, it's so funny when I first like started corresponding with Kira when she was doing voices for my, sorry, we're talking, I'm talking about Kira Buckland. Buckland. Um, yeah. Miss, Miss to be herself. Um, mm -hmm. as, as well as many other things. That's, you know, she's, she's a million. But to be's the, the, you know, the one that's that a big our, one. That's a big old audience. One. Would, yeah. 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 Um, I was like, Oh my God, you're L and yeah, she's Jolene and Jojo. Of course. Um, I was like, I remember I was, I was like starstruck. Cause I was like, Oh my God, you're Ellie in bonus stage. And she's like, how do you know that? And I was like, I used to watch bonus stage in like 2008. A bonus stage was an old Flash cartoon. And which still, I think, has some real zingers in it. Some some real good jokes and some some jokes that have weaseled their way into my lexicon. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I was like, oh my God, you were Ellie in bonus stage. She's like, y yeah, I, I was. <laughs> it's just like the once in a while, you know you'll meet somebody and there's just like one thing that you know them from and it's right. like you know you're like well that's so cool like that you did that and they're like i've done other stuff but thank you you know it's like can i yeah. can i propose something to you sure. octo yeah, okay i know every few years as content creators we have to like shuffle our whole thing you know like keep it fresh yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Can I propose to you that you become the Nardwar of voice acting? I would love to be the Nardwar of anything. <laughs> I just want you to be the Nardwar of voice acting, where, like, yeah. you go interview voice actors. You're like, I Jesse remember Cox. you from Insert let Flash me, Game. Let, yeah. let me do it. Jesse Cox, you were on the voice acting alliance forums back in the mid-2000s. You did so a fan good. dub. You did a fan dub of a very particular RPG. That's such you, a good impression. Here's here's a a direction booklet signed by the Vagrant Story team. Dodger, do you know who Nardwar is? No. Nope. Oh my right. god! I gotta send you, you the best to, of Nardwar. You need to go down the rabbit hole. Nardwar is the Doja Cat interview is insane. It's so good. So you know, you know the uh, uh, Hot Ones show where they where yes. they talk about how like it's just. A really that's, good interview. Like he that's asked, baby shit. Like Sean yeah. Evans is an incredible interviewer, but that is like that's baby, baby shit. toddler shit compared Nardwar, to Nardwar. <laughs> Nardwar is so much fun to watch because yeah. he is genuinely interested in music, not on like a like what a fun beat, but like on a level that is beyond reality. Right. Mm -hmm. Plus, he's the most Canadian man who ever lived. Yeah, Plus, yeah. he's such a like lovable goober. He is. So fun to watch. Mm -hmm. And every single one of his videos is a treat. Yeah. Like yeah. when he brings a record to some celebrity, some star that forgot they made it in like 1980. Mm -hmm. And he's yeah. like, I found this. And they're just like, what? It is yeah. so charming. <laughs> I love him. The Snoop Dogg um, interviews are just so great. When I need to just feel better, I watch the Snoop Dogg interview. The first one where he brings him like the VHS tape that he made in like 92 mm -hmm. or something and he's like, I've been looking for this. He's like, I've been looking for this for like 15 years. He's like, well, that's your stuff. Your Snoop Dogg. Best... We've got to know. Yeah, and the best part is, is every time that's they a... ask him, not they're like, well, how do you that's, that's how'd really you find this? What'd you... Your impression's very good. Um, Thank you. Like, how, how, did, how did you find this? Where's this from? And he's like, He'll just say the exact same thing every time. It doesn't matter who the person is. He's yeah. like, we need your ex person. We need yeah. to know. Like, it's so know. cute. He is a pure, a pure fandom that I want to be a part of all the time. I mm -hmm. love how happy he is to just exist in the same room with these people. Yeah. Right. Because it's and very clear he's a fan. And he's the other thing is like the the breadth of music. He does a lot of like interviews with rappers. That's like I think what he gets most famous for. He does like Kendrick Lamar, Snoop Dogg, Lil Yachty, oh. like Lil Uzi Vert, like a bunch of like famous rappers. Mm -hmm. But he yeah. also does like I think he does um Henry Rollins, like he does Jello Biafra, like he has a bunch of interviews with like a ton of a ton of like really famous musicians from all sorts of genres. It's awesome. Yeah, I think the, um, I think the the biggest reason why those ones where he uh, is talking to a rapper gets picked up, it's because he looks like the nerdiest white dude who ever lived. Yes, <laughs> like, and his his fashion sense is insane. He wears like one of those golf hats with the pom pom on top and like plaid pants. It's bizarre. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, he he yeah. looks he looks like a character. He looks like a character that would be in like a parody song. You know what yeah, I mean? Does, yeah, 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 yeah. Seem real. And mm -hmm. then it's him dropping the deepest rap lore you could imagine. You're like, damn! <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. really that sounds cool. That so fun. Can yeah, you yeah. can you guys uh, link his channel to me in our in our? Yeah, yeah. Convo? Nardwar serviette. Um, um, um get on that Nardwar. And, and also not not to be a party pooper, but we do have to mm -hmm. wrap up, guys. Aww. Oh, I'm glad we got to end on Nardwar. That's your homework, Dodger. Yeah. That's my homework. That's okay. your homework. Okay. Here we go. I dropped Watch it. Nardwar. I dropped it. In. Fantastic. Just literally, literally go to videos popular and just start watching. Okay, I will. Yeah. <laughs> the Cardi B one is so good. <laughs> yeah, the Cardi B one's really good. Okay. Anyway, um, just to thanks, to thanks. give you like an actual opportunity though, in case you don't want that to be your homework. FYI, every yeah. person who comes on gets an opportunity to suggest a game, book, movie, show, whatever, for people to to give a shot. Mm -hmm. So, what would be your homework for our viewers this week? Mine. Yes. Uh, it's a play City of Heroes. It's a classic MMO. <laughs> it's free. It's free to play. You just search for City of Heroes Homecoming. Um, the this is it's unprecedented the uh, creative freedom that they've been granted by the IP rights holders. Um, 
it's really fun. You get to make a superhero and fight supervillains, and you can make a cool backstory like the one I made. Hehe, <laughs> cute. Okay, yeah. that's your homework, guys. Play City of Heroes. Um, thank you so much, Octo, for coming on and hanging out with us. Do you want to tell everybody? Thanks for having me. Tell everybody where they can find you and what you're going to be up to. I'm Octopimp everywhere. Twitch.tv slash Octopimp. Twitter, Octopimp. YouTube, Octopimp. Um, uh, so, um, I'm, oh God, I've just finished Lies of P. I've been doing some GTA 5 RP. Um, I've been doing, um, you know, I'm, I'm going like Omega variety lately. So I'm like <laughs> never playing the same thing two days in a row. I'm like trying to just change it up constantly. Um, so yeah, just a lot of whatever. You never know what you're going to find. I think I'm playing Lethal Company next week with a bunch of VTubers. Ooh, fun. I think I'm streaming with my buddy Snuffy next week too. So that's exciting. Nice. Um, yeah, we're going to, it's, it's all over the place. I'm seeing Jesse on Monday, but that's for something <gasps> Hell else. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, 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 yeah. Secret yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> shouts out. Yeah. Amazing. All right. Thank you Thanks so much, bud. Me. Yeah. um yeah, guys you. thank you viewers for watching if you want to watch the vod of this if you missed part of it if you want to rewatch it because it was just so good uh the vods are always on jesse's channel at youtube.com slash jesse cox that's where you can find all of our other episodes as well it will cease to exist on this channel the vod will not exist here so you've got to go to jesse's to watch it <laughs> um but we'll be we'll be back again next friday same, same oh, bat and before, time. Same and bat before channel. we go, real quick. Yes. Everyone's been bugging me. Where's the? Wh when are we going to get a version of it that's audio? It's up. It Woo! exists. There's an RSS feed. There's stuff. Uh, the first three episodes are already up. We're waiting for the rest to just show up. I don't know. So they'll be there. Yay. It exists. It exists. Good job, Jesse. Crushed it. I try. Yeah. Have an amazing weekend, everybody. Have a, a fantastic week, and we'll see you next Friday. Bye bye. Bye. Doot, 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 doot. Bop, bop. Doot, doot. Yeah, yeah, you know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders Podcast. Mega Ran, Jesse, and Dodger. What up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow and see what the geek and this are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast, without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week. Got a job and a kid, I know that you all beat. So take a second, grab a drink and vibe while we catch you up in just a matter of time on gaming comics whatever you're doing if you're nerdy like us then you know you should tune in thank you for sharing our world with us now follow subscribe and turn this up yo it's Come the on. weekend yeah it's time to geek out let it begin go on stream and shout it's jesse and dodger so give them a follow number one geek podcast without a doubt